I'm John McElroy. For more than a decade and a half, I've worked in the audiobook industry as a producer and scriptwriter. I've won Grammys and other awards, and I've worked with dozens of great narrators and famous authors. In this series of videos from the Audiobook Creation Exchange, I want to show you how to become a successful home-based narrator. Here's what we'll cover. Setting up a home studio, the basics of recording, more advanced recording and editing, mastering, and the craft of narration. Watch the lessons in sequence. If you've missed something, you can always go back. Now, let's get started. I like the Bistro Chef's approach to cooking. Start with good ingredients, prepare them simply, and serve them without a fuss. The ingredients of audiobook production, the recording space, and setup. Begin the process with a simple, solid installation, and success will follow. First, let's see how the pros do it. This is a control room at Audible Studios, where the engineer records spoken word programs. And that's the isolation booth on the other side of the glass. It's where the narrator sits and reads. Your home studio will combine the functions of both rooms into a single space. Let's start with the ISO booth. First, listen. Noise can't leak in when the door's shut, but the room does have its own noise, the low-level ambience we call the noise floor. If the noise floor is too high, it makes recording and editing very difficult. That ambience needs to be as quiet as possible. Now look around. The room is outfitted to dampen sound. From the wall coverings to the anti-reflective material on the table and stand, everything contributes to the deadness of the room. Sound is absorbed before it can bounce around and echo. So there you have it, the elements of a good recording space. Isolation from outside noise, a low noise floor in a dead room. How do you recreate this in your home? The truth is, you can't, unless you buy an ISO booth of your own. Possible, but pricey. But there are good alternatives. Here's one prominent narrator's home studio. A spot between rooms and a closet on an upper floor. No fridge compressor nearby, no heating system. He's hung a blanket, dropped a rug, and put a cloth on the stand to minimize reflection. If you look hard enough, you'll even see a piece of clothing hanging in the closet. Perfect deadening material. There isn't much neighborhood traffic noise, but occasionally a passing plane shuts down the recording for a few seconds. That's not a big problem. It's a really workable little setup. No frills, but it sounds great. And that's the important thing. Let's look at another home setup. This is more permanent looking, and frankly, it's more expensive too, but it's in essence the same thing, recording components in a protected space. Big difference here, beside that big door, which is a nice piece of soundproofing, is the placement of the computer. That iMac is both a monitor and a processing unit, and that unit makes a lot of noise. The narrator has placed it just outside the window, beyond the recording space to cut down on any of that noise. But it's the same inbox, and it's pretty much the same mic setup too. So it's perfectly possible to set up a home studio without an ISO booth. Let's try it. Give me a few seconds. Voila, home studio. A desk for the computer, a stand for the script, something to absorb the sound on the surfaces, and a chair that's comfortable and won't creak. And then there's the recording equipment itself. Some people use MacBook Pros and record with the computer fairly close to the mic, as it is here. That's great, but understand that these quiet laptops get noisy when they heat up. You'll have to shut them down and take a coffee break and let them cool. If you're working with a desktop, run extension cords from the computer to the monitor and keyboard. That'll keep fan noise away from the recording space. But what about the other components? Don't ever record directly to your computer's hard disk. Use a fast peripheral drive with lots of capacity. This one gets its power from the computer itself. It's a stable device, but if it goes, it's not the end of your computer. It's an excellent investment. You should also have a backup drive to duplicate your work at the end of each day. Become obsessive about saving your work. This is a large diaphragm condenser mic, the standard for audiobook recording. But there are cheaper alternatives, like this USB-powered snowball mic. Shop around at pro audio stores and test a number of different makes and models. Find one that suits your budget, complements your voice, and works in your studio. Tell the audio pros about your needs. They may even suggest a different type of mic altogether. 
you have to experiment. The mic set in a shock mount, which stops any vibrations from traveling into this stand. Vibrations generate sound, and we don't want that. This pop screen deflects and minimizes sounds that can distort the recording, like P's, F's, TH's, and W's. You'll need a 3-pin XLR cable to connect the mic to this little number here, the Mbox Mini 2, which does a number of things. First, it powers the mic. Hit this little 48V button on the back of the unit, the phantom power that makes the mic live. Then the Mbox converts the mic's analog signal into a digital signal the computer can recognize, and that's what makes it possible to record and edit the audio. Our recording platform is Pro Tools LE, which comes with the Mbox. There's lots of recording software out there, but for this particular application, I'm a fan of Pro Tools. It works on both Macs and PCs and installs easily. True, it's more costly than some others, but when you learn it, it's an excellent tool for home audiobook recording. Oh, and you'll need a good pair of headphones. Let's stop there. In this lesson, we've created a functional, inexpensive home recording studio. Next time, we'll prepare to record and start rolling.